church to become a church of 10,000 members before we plant another church. Even if the church has just two members, our faith is that with that church of two members, at least we can also plant another church of two members in another city or the same city in the world. Are you getting the point? Because you see, to whom much is given, much is expected. So if God gives me a church of 10,000, I believe that if the person who earned one talent, the man the Lord gave one talent, earned one more, the Lord would have still said, good and faithful servant. If he earned five more, that is great. If he earned ten more. But those who earned ten did not end the ten in a day. They had one talent. Maybe they earned another talent. Then they added another talent. And they kept adding until they had ten. Are you getting the point? So one of the major things is that as we are trying to escape hell and to make it to heaven, if we want the Lord to tell us that good and faithful servant, you have been faithful with little, I will make you ruler over much. Then what I am trying to teach you as a church is that let us try to be faithful with little. Is it a good point? We want to be faithful with little. So we are trusting God that we can plant another church like this cathedral in this city or another city of the world. We want to add one more talent to one talent that we have. So that when we meet the Lord, he will be able to tell us that we are good and faithful word servants. And anybody who is able to earn one more in addition to what they already have will escape hell. You would escape hell and make it to heaven. You will never go to the lake of fire if you are faithful with what God has given you. When you are faithful with the opportunities the Lord has given you, when you are faithful with the strength, with everything, you are not going to hell. You will escape. Now, if you have had your quiet time, I give you five or six secrets. Five or six secrets that would help you to escape the lake of fire. Five or six secrets, it will help you to escape the lake of fire. Five or six secrets, you will escape hell. I mean, you will never go to hell. You will never go to hell if you pay attention to the five or six secrets that I gave you. And I said that sin is inherited. You see, sin passed on from Adam to all men until Moses. So we have all become sinners because of Adam. Bible says in Romans chapter 5 that through the sin of one man, sin was passed on. Sin entered into the world by the obedience, by the disobedience of one man and passed on to all men and death reigned until Moses. And the Bible says that if by the sin of one man, sin entered into the world and death reigned on all men, then by the obedience of one man, all can be made what? Righteous. Is it a good a, a, a argument is it a good argument talk back to me then i know that you're following what i'm preaching if one man's disobedience made all sinners then one man's obedience can make all righteous is it a good argument if one more one man's disobedience made all men sinners and all of us listen you are doing all the wrong things you are sinning you are doing all the silly things you do because adam disobeyed before adam disobeyed we didn't have knowledge of all this evil and that same way, because Christ has obeyed, all of us can be made the righteousness of God without anything that we do. Is it good preaching? So if you want to escape hell and the lake of fire, and you want to make it to heaven, to a place of peace with the Lord, we said one thing, that you should be able to admit, believe, confess, and continue in the truth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died and rose again on the third day as a ransom for all men is in your devotional. Amen. I said that if you want to escape hell, so we have it there, so you can read it. Amen. I, 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 I can't read it. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the gift of righteousness and abundance of grace shall reign in life by one. When you read, I think in the verse 12, go to verse 12, let's start reading for the sake of those who have not done their devotional. Go up to verse 12. Let's start reading the word of God from there. Glory to God. 
He said, Wherefore, as by one man, as by one man, so by the channel through the medium of one man, if sin entered into the world and death also came by sin. So all of us started dying because of Adam. Because of Adam's disobedience. That is why all of us became sinners and death began to reign. So he says that if as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men. For all have sinned. Because Adam disobeyed all men who were born by the seed of Adam were considered as sinners. Continue. For until the law sin was in the world but sin was not imputed. Now. This is what is happening. Sin was not imputed, even though all men were sinners and death reigned. Until Moses brought the law of God, no man was called a sinner. No man was called a sinner. Now, let's continue. Later on, I will explain these things to you. Nevertheless, whether they were called sinners or not. So, whether you call yourself a sinner or not. They were not called sinners. The law was not imputed. But whether you like it or not, no matter what name they call them, whether they call them righteous, they call them saints, they call them sinners, as long as sin was in the world, death reigned from Adam until Moses. So it is not so much of what you call yourself. You can call yourself a Christian. I can call myself an apostle and all that. It doesn't change the effect of sin on me. It doesn't change. What name you call yourself does not change the effect of sin on you. Sin kills and sin will kill you no matter what you call yourself. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over them that did not sin after the similitude. Did not sin after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Some of us have not even done things that are as evil as what our friends have done. What we have done is not as evil as Adam did. Yes, what you have done is not as evil as what I have done. But sin is sin and has one reward. Who, continue, is the figure of him that was to come. So Adam was in the figure, in the posture, in the position. Adam looked like God continue for me but not as the offense so also it is the free gift for if through the offense of one for if through are you following what we are reading if through the offense of one many be dead much more the grace of god and the gift by grace which is by one man jesus christ has abounded unto many so that same way so if you want to escape hell there is only one way to escape hell you became a sinner and a candidate for hell by the disobedience of adam you will escape hell by believing in the grace of the obedience of christ only your faith in christ only the grace of god can save you from hell fire if you think that doing the right things or uh, doing and being holy and all that can save you from hell it will surprise you that you live a holy life and still die and go to hell and perish in the lake of fire only one thing can save you from hell only one thing can save you from the lake of fire and that is accepting jesus christ because he's the author of our salvation continue glory to god and not as it was by one that sin so is the gift for the judgment was by one to condemn but the free gift so the judgment to perish in hellfire and the lake of fire was by one to condemn but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification so god just justifies you by your faith continue continue he said for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more they that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life or rule in life by one and that one person is jesus christ glory to god glory to god wave your hands and say thank you jesus so this is how sin came how sin began to rule how that the death of christ the finished work of christ is important for our salvation amen now go into the scriptures go to romans chapter 10 verse 6 and let me show you how your admittance your faith your confession and your continuing is important romans chapter 10 verse 6 
how do we assess this salvation which comes through Christ? How do we assess this escape from hell through the finished work of Christ? How can we depend on Christ and escape the lake of fire? How do we come out? Look at this. For the righteousness which is of faith, the righteousness which is of faith, that justification which is of faith, speak it on this wise. This is how it comes. The righteousness which is of faith. Are you following the scriptures that we are displaying? Are you following it? Follow it so that you get what I'm preaching. For the righteousness which of the faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thy heart, who shall descend into the deeps, into who shall ascend into heaven, that he may bring Christ down from above, and next one, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Don't say that in your heart. Do not say who can go into the grave and bring my healing that which is buried in the grave. That is not intelligent. Verse uh, verse 8. But what does he say? He says that the word is nigh thee. Even in your mouth. This word is near you. The word is in your mouth. And the word is in your heart. And this is the word of faith which we preach. That is why your pastor is so important. That is why the preacher is so important because if you don't hear the right teaching, your heart will be filled with the wrong teaching. The only way you can speak the right things, many of you, I told you, three things you need to pay attention to if you want a better life. I taught you on Wednesday, the first one is the words that come out of your mouth. Some of you, the words that come out of your mouth are the words of devils. They are words of defeat. They are words of failure. There are words that do not minister grace to your, healer, your, your hearers. Am I preaching to you? But if you want to speak the right words, then you must hear the preaching of the word of faith. You must hear the right kind of teaching. That's why coming to church and hearing right kind of teaching like the one I'm doing tonight. That word that inspires faith is so important for your escape from hell. Lift up your right hand and say amen to that. I said lift up your right hand and say amen to that. Yeah, when you lift up your right hand, you follow. If your mind even sways off, you come back. Because some of you have gone to Malata Market. You are thinking about what you are going to do after the service. That is why you can't focus on what I'm preaching. Look here. Say amen to that. He said, the word of faith, it is, in, it is near you. Everybody say, the word is near me. Lift up your hand. Say, the word is near me. It is in my mouth. The word is in my heart. I cannot pretend that I don't know. And this word came near came into my heart and filled my mouth by the preaching of my pastor as pastor was teaching us the word the word began to change the way i think this is how you get righteousness by faith glory to god let's read on quickly the word of faith which we preach which is that if thou shalt confess so you see you believe what we are preached by faith and it's not enough to admit and believe but if you shall confess with thy mouth the lord jesus this is how you escape hell if you shall confess with your mouth the lord jesus and shall believe and shall believe and shall believe and shall believe so sometimes the step, the step to believing is confessing sometimes you have to start speaking it before you can believe it so don't say eh, i don't believe it yes you don't believe it that is why i say start saying it start saying it as you say it you can believe it lift up your right hand and say as i say it i can believe it he said if you will confess with your mouth from your mouth it enters into what your heart if you shall confess with your mouth the lord jesus and thou shalt believe in thy heart that god has raised him from the dead you shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead do you have to do anything more to be saved look on the on, on the on the do you have to do anything more to be saved if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that god raised jesus from the dead do you have to do anything more to escape hell do you have to do anything more do you have to do anything more glory to god he said if you shall confess with your mouth and believe in your heart you shall be saved glory to god glory to god glory to god 
salvation is on this wise let's read on the reading the scriptures is nice let's read on this the screens are helping me to be a good teacher say amen to that for with the heart you believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation unto salvation glory to god all these scriptures you must memorize them like i have memorized them let's go to verse 11 look at this look at this look at this for the scripture says whosoever shall believe on him shall not be put to shame shall not be ashamed shall not whosoever shall believe on him shall not be ashamed if only you believe on christ there is nothing like rapture took place and you were left behind there is nothing like you died and christ did not raise you from the dead if you believe on him there is nothing like your life came to a standstill he will be there to save you to save you from witches and from wizards to save you from shame and from premature death to shame to save you from nakedness and from hunger to save you from homelessness jesus is faithful if you shall believe he shall save you i don't know how he would do it but he would do it by some means say amen to that glory to god glory to god for there is no difference between a greek and a jew there is no difference between the learned and the unlearned there is no difference between a jew and a greek there is no difference between a barbarian for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him unto all that confess him as lord and say save us lord unto all that are able to say hosanna this is the time to save me from poverty this is the time to save me from broken heartedness to save me from depression to save me from bruises and infirmity as you call on the lord as many as call the reason why a lot of us will go to hell is because we don't pray we don't call glory to god as a glory to God. He is rich. He is rich unto all. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10.13. That one all of us know it. Let's continue. Let's continue quickly. 14. How then shall they call on whom they have not heard? Or on whom they have not believed? And how can they believe on him they have not heard about? They have not heard about. So believe hearing. Let's continue. On whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a radio broadcast? How shall they hear without a man like me? That's why you preserve the life of a man like me. That's why you preserve the joy of a man like me. That's how you preserve the heart of a man like me. Because there is a world out there that must hear the gospel and be saved. And there is no way they can be saved except there is a preacher. A preacher that can preach the truth. A preacher that can preach like a rabbit that is being pursued by a dog. A preacher that has the conviction to totally defend what he believes a preacher a preacher a preacher how shall they preach except they have been sent how shall i preach when your offerings is one ghana two ghana you are not bringing offerings as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the good news let's continue how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel the gospel of peace oh glory to god the glad tidings of good things people who bring us good news of good things have beautiful feet. glory to god god wants us to preach in style everybody say in style in style all of us are going to be stylish as preachers we're going to be stylish because we must have beautiful feet if we have the good news say amen to that let's continue 16 let's continue 16 but they have not obeyed the gospel for isaiah said who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the lord been revealed glory to god whose report would you believe we shall believe the report of so then we can conclude that faith comes by hearing the faith that brings salvation that brings prosperity brings healing brings deliverance comes by faith comes by hearing and hearing by the scriptures as we read it by hearing and hearing by the word of god turn to your friend and said if you can admit oh turn to your friend that's what i said ten 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 say if you can admit and believe and confess and continue now listen a lot of people have admitted they have believed they have confessed but they will still go to hell because they are not continuing go to first corinthians chapter 15 first Corinthians. listen you must know the scriptures like i'm quoting them say amen to that any topic that you pick from the bible you must have a string of scriptures that explain everything glory to god 
First Corinthians chapter 15. Let's look at this scripture. Let's start from verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 15. He said, moreover, brethren, look, 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 look. Okay, if you are reading it somewhere, that's okay. But look, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. I declare unto you the gospel. I'm preaching the gospel tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now read on. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received. Have you received what I preached to you? Have you received the things? Have you received the things I told you? Have you received the things I told you? I'm asking you a question. Have you received the things I told you? Have you received the things I told you? Have you received the things I told you? Glory to God. If you have received the things I told you, the gospel I preach, wherein you stand. Now, the next question is, I have preached some good news to you, and then you said you have received it. Are you standing in it? Answer me. Are you standing in it? Uh, they said, wherein you stand. By which also ye are saved. You are saved by the things I preach to you. You are saved by the things. Listen, there is something called the guide of your youth. The guide of your youth. Let me explain something to you. I have been the guide of her youth. I have been the guide of her youth. When I saw her and I started preaching the gospel and tried, decided to guide her. If she had listened to some of the things I said, maybe the story would have been different by now. I was the guide of her youth. Are you getting the point? I was the guy. I'm, I'm your guide now as a youth. If you forsake the guide of your youth, you perish. I'll read a scripture to you. I'm the guide of your youth. I'm the guide of your youth. I'm the guide of I'm the guide of your youth. Pay attention. He said, by which you are saved. If if let's read it together. Read what you see there. If you have better sight than mine, let's read it together. One, two, go. Ah, it's a lie. Read it again. Read it again. I'm not sure that's what you're reading. One, two, let's go. If you keep in memory, if you continue to remember the things I have told you, if you continue to remember, if you don't forget it when you are alone, if you don't forget it in the night, if you don't forget it in the day, if you don't forget it in the morning, if you keep remembering the things I have preached unto you, if you keep in memory the things I have preached unto you, unless you believed in vain, Unless you are only nodding your head and lifting your hands in obedience as a public show in the service. If you believe the things I have told you. One day, Jesus was walking with his disciples. And they went into a farm. They said they are hungry. He said, pluck corn and eat. They said, we don't have water to wash our hands. He said, no problem, eat. It is wrong. It's against the laws of Moses. But the master said, eat. And that's all. David went into the temple and lied and brought shoe bread and took a sword he was not supposed to take. And David lied it right before the altar. But they were on the Lord's errand. Am I preaching to you? I'm not saying that go and lie. But the things I have preached unto you, unless you believed it in vain, the things I have told you is right, is right. And there is something that Rebecca told Jacob. He said, well, Jacob told the mother, what if I go and my father curse me? He said, your curses be upon me. I am the pastor. I give account of what I preach to you, both in public and in private. When we stand before the Lord, I give an account. Say amen to that. Unless you have believed in vain. Unless you have believed in vain. But if you truly believe the things I've told you, God will watch over you. Say amen to that. I'll never tell you lies and impunity. God will watch over you. Say amen to that. Let's continue. Unless you believe in vain. For I declared unto you, first of all, that which I have received. How that, how that, let's read it quickly. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Let's read on. And that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day. This is not a myth. This is not a story. It's a reality. How did Apostle Paul know that is a reality? One, it's according to the scriptures. He rose on the test day according to the scriptures. Now continue, continue, continue quickly. And that he was seen. When he rose from the dead, he was seen by Cephas or Cephas, whatever you want to call it. But he was seen by Cephas. And then of the twelve, he was also seen of the twelve apostles. Of the twelve apostles, he was seen of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren. 500 Christians, 500 believers also saw the resurrected Jesus before he ascended unto heaven. And he says that 
at once they saw it at once not like at different meetings there were 500 people and jesus appeared to them that is why peter was ready to die when he said that jesus rose from the dead they said denounce it or will kill you he said no 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 i saw him 500 witnesses about 513 people were in a meeting and the lord came we saw him he spoke to us we ate with him 500 at once of whom a greater part are still alive at the time apostle paul was writing this anybody who wanted to verify whether jesus actually appeared to 500 people could have verified because most of them were still alive glory to god glory to god are you persuaded now and and some have fallen asleep but at the time of writing this letter some were dead but some were still alive glory to god continue 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 and after that he was seen of james and then of all the apostles glory to god glory to god glory to god that was before the ascension he was seen by his 12 are you getting the point and then let's continue and then the last of all he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time i was like a child that my parents were not planning to give birth to me and i just came in i came to worry them but it is good for i'm the least of the apostles that i'm not me to be even be called an apostle because i wasn't with him from the baptism to his ascension because i persecuted the church i'm not supposed to be called an apostle let's end there so how many of you believe that you escape hell when you admit you believe you confess and continue you must keep it in memory everybody say keep it in memory and continue in the things you've been taught amen and amen now if you have done your devotion how to escape hell and make it to heaven at all costs is that it is not enough to just say that but bible says according to us chapter 2 that as many as received the word gladly were baptized in Acts chapter 19 when apostle paul saw the believers he asked them have you received the holy spirit since you believed isn't it isn't it and he said we have not heard anything like that now the way the christian journey is without the holy spirit it is impossible to live the life of faith it is impossible without the holy spirit nobody can make it to heaven and we have a lot of scriptures that we've been reading concerning the holy spirit isn't it do you want me to give you a string of scriptures that tells you that you need the holy spirit okay let's go john chapter 7 verse 37 to 39 let's read it quickly i have a little time but at least i want to refresh my mind about my sharpness eh? and listen as i'm standing here any topic you mention if you mention rapture i can give you a string of scriptures that explain rapture any topic in the bible you mention are you getting it let's do let's do the drill let's do the drill right now with the holy spirit we just want to do the drill with the holy spirit glory to god john 7 37 to 39 on the last day of the feast, he stood up and with a loud voice said uh, how many of you get what i'm trying to say so i know what is there i can quote it without him on the last day of the on that great day of the feast, he stood up and said with a loud voice he cried out with a loud voice and said and said what if any man test let him come in unto me and drink of this is poker uh, he that believeth on me as the scriptures have said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water let's go quickly rivers of living water of this is spoke of the holy spirit which those who believe on him should receive because he wasn't yet glorified is it there of this is spoke of the spirit that they that believe on him should receive because he was not as yet glorified glory to god <laughs> glory to god so he had not been glorified and this glorification was supposed to have happened when he was buried and then he rose from the dead amen and amen let's go to us chapter one as chapter one we want to read from maybe verse four it is said are you at this time going to restore the kingdom unto us he said no it is not for you to know times and seasons Ush. wake up okay being assembled together with him he commanded them not to go out of jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father but to wait for the promise of the father which he said you have heard of me so i told you that the father will give you a promise and this is said in john 14 john 16 john 17 i'll pray the father to send you another comforter a loose paracletus another of the same kind another comforter of the same kind for john truly baptized with water but not many days from here you shall be baptized with the holy spirit look at this he says the elder which among you how many of you see it feed the flock of god which is among you 
feed the flock of God which is among you which means that we the you all of us here those of us seated here there is an actual flock of God are you following what I'm saying there are some people who come to the services they are in the church they are not part of the flock of God one day I wrote somewhere on Facebook and said that the church is not a clinic for sinners and some people didn't understand what we are talking about I told them the greatest problem of the church is the next multitude the greatest problem of the church are those who have come in and they have not come in because of salvation they have come in for other reasons when you preach they get angry they have the greatest problem of the church feed the flock which is among you in one scripture they said that there are some people who have joined us they are a spot in our fist look for that scripture for me a spot in our fist they said they are a spot in our fist they are a spot in our fist they join us when they come together they join us they join us but these people cannot be trusted they cannot be trusted whilst we are busy they are also busy scattering they are a spot s p o t a spot in our fist amen glory to god spots in our fist have you found anything like that jude chapter 1 verse 12 jude chapter 1 verse 12 go there very quickly so feed the flock which is among you not everybody that comes to church is a christian be very careful be very careful jude chapter 1 verse 12 lift up right and say thank you jesus thank you jesus glory to god glory to god say it say it like a minute say thank you jesus Jude chapter 1 verse 12 he said for these are spots in your fist of charity when they fist with you when they fist with you feeding themselves without fear they are clouds without water carried about by strong winds do you see it they are clouds without water carried about by strong winds carried about by strong they are trees whose fruits have withered without fruit twice dead twice dead these are very serious descriptions of people who also come to church so they are in the services but they are spots in our fist as we celebrate love they are plucked up to the roots they are sports they, they, they are a dent on the integrity of the church is it good preaching tell yourself be part of the flock of God be part of the flock of God tell somebody be part of the flock of God be part of the flock of God glory to God be part of the flock of God Hallelujah. Be part of the flock of God. Glory to God. Be part of the flock of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be part of the flock of God. Be part of the flock of God. Next one. Continue steadfastly in my doctrine, my fellowship, my prayer, my breaking of bread in the fear of the Lord. My breaking of bread in the fear of the Lord. My breaking of bread in the fear of the Lord. Put his head sideways for me. In the breaking of bread. And he continues steadfastly. There is something the pastor is teaching. There is something, some prayers the pastor is leading. Listen, some of us, we are not loyal and honest. We are not. We are not. We are not. But let us continue. I don't want to go further. I will spoil the preaching. But continue steadfastly in the pastors. In my doctrine. In the things I'm teaching, in my prayer, in my fellowship, in my fellowship, in my fellowship, in my breaking of bread, in prayers. And this is the church culture that brings miracles. Go to verse 43. And the fear of the Lord came upon every soul. If everybody who comes to church knows that you walk by the doctrine I teach, people will walk in the fear of the Lord. They will walk in the fear of the Lord. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and miracles were done by the hands of the apostles. This is the culture for miracles.